Hey guys, welcome to my video on externalities. Uh, this video doesn't have any math in it. It's designed to be pretty entry level. We're just going from a supply and demand graph. I've done some relabeling. Instead of calling it a supply curve, I'm calling it the private marginal cost curve. Supply is based on the cost of production, specifically the marginal cost. So those are the same thing. And the private marginal benefits curve tells us how much we're willing to pay for a good. And it represents the demand curve. That's a supply curve, that's a demand curve, they've just been relabeled. Now, externality in my class is the first form of market failure that I teach where the market fails all by itself. Price floors, price ceilings, whatever, those things, we intervene in a functioning market and we create a deadweight loss. But this one with externalities, the market has a deadweight loss all by itself. So let's talk about what an externality is. An externality is occurs when the market generates some cost or benefit that affects a third party. That's not a concrete, like textbooky definition, but it's the main idea. When your market creates some cost or benefit that affects someone outside of the market, we call those external costs or external benefits and those are the externalities. Now, once upon a time, you learned that a market's efficient because consumer surplus and producer surplus are maximized in a market. And we talked about deadweight losses and how that meant we were losing some sort of surplus. And so it was bad. Well, let's explain a little bit with externalities why this market fails by itself. You see, in, in perfect competition, all costs and all benefits are accounted for and the market quantity occurs when the private marginal benefits equals the private marginal cost or when the supply meets the demand and at that point every time the marginal benefits outweigh the marginal costs every time the transaction is net positive benefits greater than or equal to cost the transaction happens but what if the market's ignoring some cost what if somehow it's failing to account for all of these costs? So let me give us a little bit of a framework for thinking about this. And I'll give a couple of examples. We can have production externalities and we can have consumption externalities. Production externalities can be negative or positive. And consumption externalities likewise can be negative or positive. But first, let's get a little bit of a framework to talk about these things, and then I'll give some examples. Production externalities are created when we build something or make something. Consumption externalities when we use something. It can be positive or negative. It can be positive or negative. So let's model these. Well, the production side of a market over here, that affects the supply side. And in the case of a negative externality, that means that there are more costs to society than what our firm is actually accounting for. The firm counts for its own costs, but it's ignoring the cost to someone else. And so we might have something like this, where this red line was our social marginal cost curve where the cost to society outweigh the costs to the individual firm. And when this happens, you find that the market quantity is greater than the socially optimal quantity. The optimal quantity, by the way, is just when the, all of the costs and benefits are accounted for. Now let's get a little bit of a look at what's going on behind the scenes here. There is some external cost and the social marginal cost is equal to the private marginal cost plus the external cost. The gap between this red line and this black line would be the external cost. And because our firm ignores some of what's happening in the market, they're ignoring this external cost, they overproduce the good from society's standpoint. From society's point of view, everything between Q star and Q market the costs, red line, are greater than the benefits, black line. 
And so this market all by itself creates a deadweight loss because these extra transactions are a net loss for society. These transactions between Q star and Q market costs outweigh the benefit. That's negative surplus. That's a loss. This market's overproducing the good. Now, in the case of positive consumption, sorry, positive production externalities, the opposite can happen. With a positive production externality, it still affects the supply side. But we're going to model it this way, where it means that the cost to society are lower than what we would normally measure. It means that the firm is ignoring some cost reduction or some help that their product could be doing for others. And so in, in this and so in this case, there would be a market quantity of the good. And there would be a, an efficient quantity of the good. And in this case, we would say that the market is underproducing because the market is producing less than the socially optimal amount. It's not efficient. And what does that look like as far as deadweight loss is concerned? Well, there's this Q star. And there's this market quantity. And between these two quantities... We got this range where the benefits of a transaction outweigh the costs. And that means that there's going to be a deadweight loss. In the negative externality, we were overproducing a good, producing when the costs outweigh the benefits. But with a positive externality, we underproduce the good because we're missing transactions where the benefits would have outweighed the costs. Now, the consumption externalities, we can make similar arguments, only the Consumption is on the demand side, so it can affect the benefits to society of an action. Negative consumption externalities, we would model something like this. The benefits of consumption are less than society was thinking. But there's the optimal quantity, there's the market quantity. Positive externalities would mean that there's more benefits than, than the individual thinks. And society benefits more, and so the market quantity is less than the optimal quantity. I forgot to put some labels on here. My apologies. This would be the social marginal benefit. And so would this. And of course, we can shade deadweight losses from both of them. So the deadweight losses look like this. Uh, for the negative consumption externality, here's the optimal point. The market's consuming this much. In this range, the costs outweigh the benefits. In the Positive consumption externality, here's the optimal point. The benefits outweighed the cost between here and here, and so that's a loss. You'll notice there's a pattern with all these deadweight losses. They're all triangles. They're all pointed at the optimal point where the social marginal costs and benefits meet. Uh, and they all get bigger the farther from optimum you go. And they all have to do with the relationship between costs and benefits. If you're missing transactions where benefits outweigh costs, deadweight loss. If you have transactions where costs outweigh benefits, deadweight loss. Now, let me put a couple of summary ideas on here. One, the optimal outcome is always going to be this, where the marginal social benefits equal the marginal social cost. Uh, the market outcome will be where the private marginal benefits equals the private marginal cost. The thing is, externalities, they put a gap between marginal social cost, sorry, private social cost, and social marginal cost. They put a gap between private marginal benefits and social marginal benefits. And that gap is where the inefficiency comes from. The market is only efficient if these are both true, which only happens if there is no externality. The private marginal benefits equals social marginal benefits, Private marginal cost equals the social marginal cost. So some examples of these. With your negative ex production externalities, anything with pollution or too much noise or whatever, uh, there's a cost that the firm doesn't feel that's affecting someone else. If you are dumping chemicals in a stream at your mining company on the top of the mountain, people downstream will be poisoned by it. With the positive production externalities, the common 
quintessential one is if you're a beekeeper, your bees will go and pollinate nearby farms and help them to have better crops. In both cases, those are costs and benefits that we don't really think about on our own bottom line. And so a market will choose an inefficient quantity of production. In the case of consumption externalities, a case of a negative one would be if I like to cook reused tuna sandwiches in the microwave at work, I make everything stink. My consumption creates a stink that everyone else has to deal with. Uh, another one is just if I drive my car too fast, I make everyone else less safe. There are positive consumption externalities as well, where my consumption can make things better for someone else. An example is education, where me becoming educated and being able to be a more able market worker might have positive spillover effects throughout my local economy. Uh, so that's all stuff to consider. Now, this video is long enough, so I'm going to stop here. Uh, in part two, I'm going to mess around with this graph. And I'm going to pick one of these externalities. And I'm going to make this market inefficient and talk about different policy options to fix it. Uh, in the meantime, though, this one's done. So thanks for watching, guys. Good luck and happy econing.